Hi everyone, uh, in this uh, hopefully first of a series of tutorials, I will introduce Topologic uh, in Blender, in Sphershock Blender uh, to you. Uh, Topologic, as you may have uh, read about, is a, a piece of software that allows you to deal uh, with hierarchical entities uh, in, uh, in Blender. Uh, it allows you to figure out adjacencies, uh, do analysis on what you are doing. It's, it's meant for conceptual design. Um, so let's get started. Uh, this video, in this first video, we are going to create what you see here on the screen. Uh, two cubes uh, that are offset from each other that are then merged. And then we are de uh, deriving automatically uh, the three cells, as we call them, the three entities or three solids uh, that are the result of that Boolean operation. So let's get started from the beginning. I'm going to close uh, Blender and start over just to show you how it works. So we start Blender. Uh, I'm using version 2.92, but I know that it will work also with newer versions. You just need to install it uh, the right way. So yeah, 2.92 here. Uh, let's switch over to the scripting uh, setup. And you need to have, obviously, Sphershock and Topologic uh, installed. So let's go to Preferences and take a look at those. So let's start with Sphershock. So Sphershock at the beginning, I don't know why there are two here. I'll have to check that. I may have done something wrong. So I have 0 0.6.0.0. .0 .0. You might have a newer version. And then we install Topologic. And Topologic is at currently... 0.5.4.7 uh, but I'm updating it very frequently so you might have a newer version uh, from the github uh, repository uh, okay so those are the two versions uh, let's go ahead and switch this over to a Sverchok nodes uh, view and uh, let's take a look at uh, topologic so topologic is available either from the add menu oh, sorry we have to do a new uh, node tree obviously you can call it whatever you would like here and you will notice that you have a topologic menu at the bottom so topologic uh, has several core uh, um, classes or of objects uh, th these are just to go through them a vertex which is a point an edge a line uh, a wire which is a collection of lines a face which is made out of a closed wire perhaps a shell think of it as a almost like an open cardboard box uh, it can be made out of faces that share edges a cell is a solid or a closed shell so when you close the shell you can make it into a cell and a cell complex is a series of cells that share faces so as long as they have shared faces you can make a cell complex out of them and the nice thing about cell complex obviously it is spatially resolved and also has adjacency information. So you can derive a cell and ask for its adjacent cells, for example. And you can do that with the other entities as well. A cluster is, think of it as a grouping. So you can group all sorts of um, topologies together of different types. Uh, an aperture is a special type of face, which is uh, represents kind of an opening in the face. It's not, uh, it's not exactly a hole because faces can have in interior boundaries, as we call them, which become holes. But a fa an aperture is a special type of subface that belongs to a face uh, that can represent, as I said, a door or a, or a window or any kind of um, aperture. Uh, I will not get into context and dictionaries and graphs. I mean, you can, you can take a look and read about them. We'll cover them perhaps in future videos. And then topology is the superclass, basically. It has uh, everything in topology is, is actually a member of the topology class. And that's where you can do all sorts of methods, as you can see here. It has the largest amount of, of methods. And then I have an about, about node that allows you to um, find out the uh, versions that you are using. So this one is using uh, Topologic Core 1.4, it's using Topologic Pi 0.4, which are these prerequisites, and it's using uh, Topologic Sverchok with 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.7. All right, so let's delete these uh, and let's start. We can start by deleting this default cube. We don't need it. We're gonna create our own uh, entity. 
Um, and of course, if you know topology, if you know Sverchuk, I mean, you know that you can get the menus from uh, Shift A as well. I think that's the preferred method. And uh, let's start, start by creating a, a, um, a topology. Now, there are um, several ways you can create topologies. One is to create something in uh, Sverchuk or in Blender and then bring it into uh, Topologic. So let me show you that. We're not going to use that in our tutorial, but uh, I should probably illustrate it. So Topologic is designed uh, on purpose not to display anything to the screen because we feel like it will uh, clutter the screen or clutter your scene uh, a lot if you if you keep um, representing the topologies uh, as scene elements. But if you would like to, to display them, then you use something called topology.geometry, which converts the topology into blender geometry or vertices, uh, edges, and uh, faces that can then be displayed. So as we say with topologic, there's only um, usually one entrance and one exit point for uh, converting between uh, the host geometry and, uh, and topologic entities. So what are those things? The first one is called topology by geometry. So let's exercise that a little bit. So topology by geometry is a node where it means that you are creating a topology by a, an input type of geometry. Now, unfortunately in Blender, which we did not know when we uh, designed the uh, topologic, they also use the same names as we do. They use the names vertices, edges, and faces. But it's important to note the difference that uh, the input vertices to this node are blender vertices, you know, blender vertices, blender edges, blender faces, but our output is topologic vertices, topologic edges, and topologic faces, which obviously have the same name but have a different data structure. In reality, in this node, the most useful output is the one that is called topology because that builds your topology, like a, a cube will become a cell. A, a rectangle might become a wire or a surface will become a face. So how do we get uh, how do we get stuff in here? So if for example, if I create an icosahedron, so I'm gonna search for an icosahedron uh, object. So I'm gonna use alt space and type ico. So there's an icosphere. All right, so this icosphere has a radius of one, subdivision is two, that's fine. And it has as output vertices, edges, and faces. Those are Blender entities, and they are compatible with these inputs. So I'm going to go ahead and link them. All right, fantastic. So we link them in. Now uh, I should get something out of Topologic. So I'm going to control click over this node in order to get a temporal stethoscope, which t tells me what is the output of Topologic. So this is like a quick shortcut to, see, to check on what it is. And you'll notice that, oops, sorry, let's get this uh, in. I'm zoomed in maybe a bit too much. You'll notice that it is a topologic cell. Obviously, a solid like an icosphere would result in a cell. Okay, fantastic. So, right, we, so we have this cell. Uh, we want to now display it onto the screen. So, the way to display it from topologic is to use the exit one, which is called topology.geometry. So a lot of people get confused by this because the names are similar. Topology by geometry is an entry entry point and topology.geometry is, is an exit point. So let's go ahead and find uh, topology.geometry. And again, this one takes a topology and then outputs blender vertices, blender edges, and blender faces. And it's the only one that does that. Um, if somebody has a suggestion on how to distinguish between these names and then these names for, for topologic, uh, I would really appreciate it because I'm not very happy about the confusion between uh, similar names like this. So, um, right, so we connect the cell to, to here. It will decompose it into vertices, edges, and faces. So now we can display it on screen. One way to display it on screen very quickly is to do a temporal viewer, which again, you can get as a shortcut by control clicking onto the node itself. So again, another control click here gives me this temporal viewer, uh, connects the uh, nodes correctly for me, and I get the uh, icosphere uh, that I created originally. 
Now, obviously, I did not need uh, for just a simple thing. I don't need topologic in the middle. I could have connected uh, the icosphere directly to the temporal viewer and, and got the same result. But the idea is that between this entry point and this exit point here in the middle, you will do a lot of uh, topologic uh, analyses and operations that will be useful to you. And then at the end, you exit and you show the, the result. And you can show this result at any point during the process. So I hope, I hope this is clear, uh, but we're going to delete this now and go back to our original tutorial, which is to create these two cubes. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this and uh, let's get started. So um, Topologic has some convenience methods to create uh, primitives or you know, cubes and cylinders, basically. That's all we have, I think. I don't think we have anything else because Blender has a lot of uh, primitives that you can use and just bring them in through topology.geometry. Uh, but we do have a prism, so I'll, I'll just use that. You know, it doesn't really matter which one you use. So I'm just going to get a prism in. So let's take a look at what prism has, because again, this is um, typical of other um, uh, nodes in Topologic. What you see on top, and most of the nodes now in Topologic have this uh, drop menu at the top. This is what I call replication. The idea of replication, uh, I did my own. I implemented my own replication. I know that Sverchok uh, and some people on Sverchok have, have created their own type of uh, replication. But I wanted, it, I wanted to kind of control it and understand it myself and make sure that it is doing exactly um, what I expect it to do. So what is this? This is basically a way to handle uh, inputs which are lists. So you might have lists uh, of different uh, lengths. So instead of inputting like a single entity, like for example, here, I'm uh, inputting an origin, uh, the origin of this cell. Where do I want the origin to be? This could be a single vertex, a single topologic vertex, but it can also be a list of vertices. Okay. Uh, let's say you want to put 10 cubes. So you can put 10 origins in here, you know, make a list and put them in there. And then you might want to also say, well, uh, those 10 cubes uh, have also varying widths. They're not all the same width. They're not all one. You know, they can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, for example. So every time you move the cube and put it at a different origin, you also want it to have a different width or a different, or a different height. So how do you coordinate these things? Uh, you might have lists that are not matching in their length. So uh, this menu tells you or tells the, the node what to do. So let's go through them. Trim basically uh, looks at the shortest list that you have provided and then ignores anything that is in the other inputs that are a longer list. Okay. So if you only provided two origins, but let's say 10 heights, it will only give you two cubes uh, using the first two heights and then it will ignore the rest. It will trim them. Uh, iterate, it, what it will do is it will uh, iterate the shorter lists. So it will um, go through them again and again and again to match the length of the longest list that you have. So it will iterate through them. So if I have only two origins, you will find that the cubes are going increasing in height, but they are only located at these two origins. So it will be A, B, A, B, A, B. Uh, repeat does the same kind of thing. It tries to extend the shortest list to match the longest list, but it will only repeat the last item in the shorter list. So you will notice that if you have two origins that, and you have, let's say, 10 heights, all the cubes uh, after the second cube will be at the second origin and they will increase in height. So it will repeat the last origin. Interlace, uh, if you want to look it up mathematically, uh, this will be called a Cartesian product. Uh, basically, it takes each element of the list and matches it with each other element of the list. So you can create a grid that way. So if you have, let's say, um, several uh, numbers for the x-axis, several numbers for the y-axis, it will create a grid on the x and y. It will interlace the two together. So try them out. You'll, you'll get the hang of them really quickly. Uh, the default is always iterate, uh, and if the lists are the same length, you're, you'll get exactly the expected result. Okay, um, the other thing obviously is that uh, topology, uh, well, Sverchok is really nice in that it gives you this type of 
a built-in uh, user interface so if you do not want to feed it uh, with length and height or direction this is basically the normal direction of the cube um, it will you can type them in here so you can change the width length and the height directly in there without having to feed in numbers right so we have this prism uh, let's go ahead and uh, display it so I'm gonna do topology.geometry on it and then I'm going to control click very quickly on it and that is the queue now this menu uh, is uh, tells you where you want the origin to be uh, regarding this cube relative to this cube uh, bottom is basic should really be bottom center it is the uh, center of the bottom face uh, this is from 3d studio max because i used to use 3d studio max and i really like the fact that the origin of the cube is not at the centroid of the cube not in the center of it or center of mass but really at the at the bottom and it allows you to place things on top of each other really uh, simply uh, but if you don't like uh, don't like it to be at the bottom you can put it at the center so now the origin is at the center it's hard to see here but it definitely is going through the center or you might say i'd like it to be in the lower left corner uh, as you can see here so this is the the origin right there whatever you would like i'm going to leave it at, at lower left corner i think that looks clean here um, right, so we have this one cell. Let's create another cell. There are different ways. We can translate the cell and create a, a translated copy, meaning a moved copy, or we can just simply uh, move it, make a copy of it, and give it a different origin. And that's what I'm going to do, just to show you the vertex uh, node. So this is the same cell now, uh, same width, length, and height, but I'm going to give it a different origin. So I'm going to create something called vertex by coordinates and you can give it an x y and z so i'm going to give it a 0 0.6 0 0.6 and 0 0.6 offset or origin uh, and i'll feed that in and i will do the same thing i will try to display it copy these move them over here and let's give this a different color make it let's say red and display it and there it is okay so I, the idea now is to uh, merge those two together and derive the third cell that is in the middle <coughs> excuse me so how do we do this so we have in uh, topologic something called boolean so let's go ahead and uh, look for it under topology there is something called uh, boolean under b and again, you'll see here that you have the, the replication uh, options. So you can Boolean one with many or many to many, whatever you would like. And then the actual Boolean operation, this is uh, cropped a little bit, but it says Boolean operation here. Uh, you have these Boolean operations. So what are those? Uh, we have uh, four that are regular and you should be familiar with them. Uh, union is to glue two things together. Difference is to subtract one from the other. Intersect is to find the intersection of the two uh, entities. And symmetrical difference in uh, mathematics is called symmetrical difference. In Dynamo and Grasshopper versions of topologic, we called it uh, XOR, exclusive OR. Uh, but here I have decided uh, symmetrical difference is probably a better name for it. Uh, and then we have the uh, so, uh, symmetrical difference, just if, you don't, if you're not familiar, finds the things in A that are not in B and the things in B that are not in A. It's so kind of like the exclusive set. And then we have uh, four that are irregular. So let me go through those. Uh, merging merges the two things. It's not like a union, really, it, because it maintains all the interior entities. So in this case, that's what we're going to use to get the three cells that are uh, the merge of those two things slice exactly as the name implies you can slice one entity with another usually we use it between faces and solids but you can use it with different things but slice basically uh, creates a uh, perhaps a cell complex if you are slicing let's say a cube with different planes or different faces it will create an entity that has interior subdivisions or interior cells it will create a cell complex basically um, impose means that it will in this case for example if we impose the red cube onto the blue cube 
the blue cube will be sliced will have um, a smaller volume but the uh, red cube will be whole it will be imposed on it so it will not never be sliced and the result will be again a cell complex made out of two cells but the red one will be the red cell will be a fully uh, formed cube and then imprint it's very much like uh, let's say uh, putting a footprint into the mud uh, and leaving an imprint so basically in this case if we are imprinting the red cube onto the blue cube uh, you will notice that the red cube will go away but the blue cube will be made out of two two cells a small one which is the remnant of the red cube being imprinted on it and the remainder of the blue cube try those on your own once you do this tutorial and you can get like different results and you'll see you'll see what they look like so for now we're going to be using the merge and we're going to feed it those two cells so we're going to go back to these original two cells here and feed it in and uh, that's it we have a, a boolean operation here uh, one thing to notice uh, that in Svirchok it's a really nice way to do it uh, it does not do the operation until you have an output so it doesn't like waste your time once you connect here it will connect them and say okay I'm ready for you whenever you want to see the output I can uh, I can conduct that operation so let's go ahead and write uh, or control click on this and you'll notice that once we did that, it you know, did the operation and gave us a cell complex. All right. So if we wanted to examine this cell complex, like for example, we want to know uh, how many cells does it have? The answer should be three cells. So let's go ahead and uh, test that. So again, I'm going to uh, look for uh, subtopologies. Oops, let's type it correctly. Subtopologies. And I'm going to say that I would like to get cells out of this topology. So again, connect the cell complex to it, uh, control click on it in order to see it. And sure enough, it has uh, three cells. Now, one note on uh, lists, because uh, this is kind of a, an important point for uh, Sverchok. Uh, Svirchok sometimes tells you to put things in nested lists, like, you know, this would be like two brackets in here. Uh, I decided with Topologic uh, everything to be um, at least one, one list, but not really, not nest list unless I have to. Uh, and everything is tested within Topologic, so you can feed data from one node to the other as expected. It will always work. However, when you are interfacing topologic with Svirchok, there are rare cases where you need to uh, wrap, as they call it, wrap the output in a, in, a diff in a second layer of lists. So you need lists of lists. Now, uh, it's very easy to do in Svirchok if you are not familiar with it. So open up the Svirchok uh, panel here and just click on Show Socket uh, Menus and you will get a menu here. And this menu will allow you to do different things. Uh, I know what flatten is. I know what unwrap and wrap. Some of the other ones, grafting and grafting topology, which is different than our topology, of course, and flatten topology. Um, you can you have to like read uh, the Svirchok documentation on what these things mean. But the main things is to wrap and unwrap. So if I wrap this output, you'll notice that I got a second list here, a second bracket. So this is a list within a list. And sometimes Svirchok nodes uh, require that. So if that's the case, just simply wrap the output and keep going, you know, interface. Now, if in Topologic, um, because I know that some users might need to do that, uh, as, a, as a rule, I flatten the lists. So even if you have wrapped it and you um, feed it into a different Topologic node, it will work because I, can, I will flatten it uh, internally. I do not uh, deal with uh, nested lists uh, in terms of, uh, you know, like Grasshopper or Dynamo. If you feed a nested list, you get a nested list output. Um, I have not done that here. I might do it in the future. For now, I, if, if it is a nested list, I flatten it and I output a flat list at, at the end. Some people might not like that. Uh, I'm, I'm willing to hear feedback on that and uh, I can change it if need be. 
Um, right, so we got those three three lists, so we need to visualize them. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, hide the original uh, cells. And uh, let's remove this as well, because we really don't need it. Uh, so we have the cell complex here, that is the result. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, explode it. So I have something called explode. What is explode? Uh, it comes from, you know, my background in architecture, we have something called uh, exploded axonometric, which is a nice way to uh, display the sub part of what you are creating, of your building usually. So it kind of like pushes or pulls things apart so that you can you can see them. And that's what, what I decided to implement. So I'm gonna look for topology.explode. So let's see what it, what it requires. It requires a topology, it requires an origin, uh, which is at, at from where things will radiate, and then a scale, uh, which is how much you want to uh, move the, the sub-objects. And then it's, it has this weird thing called type filter 255. I need to change that probably to make it a little bit more readable for the user. But basically, every topology in Topologic has a type ID. So a vertex might be type one, uh, an edge might be type 2, etc. So let's go ahead and take a look at those. Why do I have that here, first of all? Because when you explode an entity like a cell complex, you might want to explode the cells, so you keep the cells where they are, but just move them. Or you might want to explode the faces, so kind of it really explodes and it opens it up. Or you might want to explode the edges, or you might want to explode even the vertices, just move points around. So this allows you to explode different types. So let's go ahead and look for the type filter. So there is something called um, type ID, I believe. Yeah, topology.typeID. And this one, uh, let's control click on it. For a vertex, as you can see here, uh, it is one. For an edge, it is two. For a wire, it's four, etc., etc. So a cell is 32. So all we need to do is feed that in because we want to explode cells. And then let's get a number. Uh, oops, sorry. Let's get a number. And, uh, oops, no, 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 don't do that. It's too smart. It's trying to tell me that I want to put something in the middle here. And, uh, yeah, no. I need it to be um, a scale factor. So I'm going to do like a 1.5 scale factor. All right. So that's the scale. Uh, this is obviously the topology, the cell complex. And I'm going to get the cells out of it, as I can see here. So let's get rid of that, clean up a little bit. So now we need the origin. Now, uh, the origin is going to be a little bit difficult. So I'm going to just uh, guess at it a little bit. I know that the second cube is at 0 0.6.6.6 .6 .6 here, um, and probably I can push that a little bit, so I'm gonna do it like maybe 0.75. So I'm gonna get my copy of this vertex by coordinates and change the numbers uh, to kind of make it uh, almost the, what I need is really the centroid of that small cube in the middle. And I could have gotten it. I mean, I could get the cells, find the one with the smallest volume, for example, um, and find the centroid of that and use that as the origin. Uh, just too much. It's too advanced for, for this tutorial. So I'm just going to guess that 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 0.7 will, will be enough, will, will show me exactly what I need to see. Okay, so now uh, now this has hopefully been exploded. So we're going to do a topology.geometry on this. So topology.geometry. Where is it? It's right here. And uh, we are going to uh, control click on this one to get a temporal viewer. And click to see it. And there it is. Uh, if we wanted it uh, expanded a little bit more, so we can give it a higher number and it will expand it more or less. And uh, yeah, that's, that's really what it is. Um, I will stop here. Uh, let me just show you the uh, 
the full thing you might want to kind of copy it repeat it so i'm going to zoom in on it a little bit Let's say we don't need this one because we are not going to uh, show these geometries so you can clean up a little bit uh, just again to organize things a little bit so that you see what they are and this is kind of the, the minimal definition for creating this exploded view uh, and let me just go through them uh, one more time you create a prism one by one by one you create another prism one by one by one but you put it at a different uh, origin so you create a vertex by coordinates and i put it at 0 0.6 0 0.6 0 0.6 you take those two prisms and you feed them into topology dot boolean you feed it a and b and you choose the uh, merge option and then you explode the cell complex which is the result of this boolean operation here you explode that and you give it an origin for the explosion which is 0 0.7 0 0.7 0 0.7 and you give it a scale for the explosion for in this case 1.6 and you tell it which type of subtopologies do you want to explode in this case we're saying cell and then you feed it to topology.geometry and you view that final final result so i'm just going to leave you with uh, what will happen if i changed uh, the topology id to explode the faces because it will look nice i think and here it is you're exploding now the faces and you can see that it is a a different uh, type of entity we can explode the edges like this and we can even explode just the vertices and you just get points. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope I will be able to create uh, more tutorials for you in the future. Thank you for listening.